Hello everyone, it's Mr. Harland. Today is a good day. Today we talk about Henry Sims. Yet another British highwayman. Oh yes. Another highwayman. Yes, yes, these things are fun to do. And they always will be. Well, now that the intro is over with, let's get right into the video, shall we? Ah, let's pick a tree, everyone. Ah, isn't that nice? Henry Sim. Known as a young gentleman Harry or the gentleman highwayman. I'm not surprised. <sighs> yet another gentleman highwayman, yet I'm not surprised. Was a thief and highwayman in the 18th century England who was transported to Maryland for theft but escaped and returned to England where he was eventually executed for highway robbery. This is quite a common theme in the United Kingdom when it comes to highwaymen. He was born in St. Martin in the Fields, London, England in 1717 and was orphaned at a young age. He was sent to live with his grandmother who had him educated at an academy in St. James Parish. <clears throat> he was a good scholar and as well as learning to read and write. He picked up some measure of French and Latin. He showed some criminal tendencies from as young as ten, stealing money from the till of a shop he was visiting with his grandmother. Grandmother Later, having fallen in with bad company in the slum area of St. Giles, he robbed his grandmother of 17 pounds and spent the evening getting drunk. His new acquaintances then robbed <clears throat> him of his money and clothes through the efforts of a kindly landlord. He took pity on the boy who he found wandering the streets wandering in the streets dressed in rags. His grandmother was persuaded to take Sims back into her house, but for a month he was kept shackled and shackled to the kitchen grate during the day and guarded at night. At the end of the month he was set free and immediately returned to St. Giles, where he was again made drunk and robbed of his clothes. Despite this, his grandmother allowed him to return to the house and arranged an apprenticeship for him with a breeches maker. 
Sims did not last long in the possession after he was reprimanded. He ran away and stole clothes from his grandmother's house, which he sold. His grandmother went to live at the house of Lady Stanhope, but Sims followed her there, and having gained admittance and stole several items, these he sold for nine pounds and spent the proceeds with his criminal friends. After this, his grandmother would have nothing further to do with him, and he supported himself with petty crime. He was arrested as a pickpocket and was fortunate to escape transportation for extortion. Fearing arrest, he pleaded with his grandmother to help him, and while she would not accept him back into her house, she arranged for him to stay with friends. However, he soon slipped back into a life of crime and robbed a man of his watch and Marlbone. More of his acquaintances were transported and again worried that he might meet the same fate. Sims managed to secure himself a position as a coach driver for an innkeeper and soon moved on to driving the carriage of a nobleman with a little money with a little money to his name from the wages he had earned in his position, he once again took up took to crime and this time as a highwayman. Because of his education, dress, and supposed skill as a thief, he became known in the underworld as Gentleman Harry. He committed several robberies at Blackheath and was pursued to Lev to Lewisham, where he threatened to his pursuers with pistols scaring them off. He stopped a coach on the way to London and robbed the occupant of a hundred two guineas. More than most people earned in a year at the time, which is quite a bit of money. Which he immediately spent on gaming tables in London, even tipping the driver of the coach who saw him in London five shillings to pretend not to have recognized him. Surprised it worked, but I wouldn't be surprised it didn't, and it didn't. It never did. <clears throat> A reward was put up for his capture, and to avoid arrest, he signed on first as a privateer and then as a soldier. He was involved in the assault on a prostitute in a brothel and was arrested, but for giving evidence against his accomplice, he was set free. They were transported. His freedom did not last long. He was soon arrested for robbing a baker's shop and sentenced to be transported. He planned to escape when the ship transporting him rounded the Isle of Wight, but he was under close guard and could not put his plan into action. Arriving in Maryland, he was sold as an dentured servant for twelve guineas, but almost immediately escaped, stealing his master's horse and riding for the coast. Then he was taken on as, on as a seaman and offered six guineas to work the ship back to England. The ship was captured by the French, but the crew were ransomed, and Sims got work on a man o war rising to the rank of midshipman. However, as soon as the ship put into port in England, he left it and uses wages to live the high life for a while in Bristol. Running out of money, he signed aboard another ship, but he fell out with the captain and was put ashore with no pay. He stole a horse and rode to London, robbing the London to Bristol coach on the way. Notices were put out regarding the stolen horse, and so he abandoned it and stole another, but unfortunately, when he tried to pass the turnpike at Tyburn, the keeper recognized the horse and knocked him off. Sims threatened him with his pistols and managed to escape. Sims carried out a series of robberies in London and Epping Forest, but wasted his money on prostitutes and worried for his safety. He decided to leave for Ireland, robbing several people and Saint and the St. Albans stage on the way. He was pursued to Hawcliffe, where he was captured after falling asleep in an inn. He was sent to Bedford Gal to await trial, but having somehow retained one of his pistols, he attempted to escape on the way. His, pis his pistol misfired, and the attempt was unsuccessful. 
He was transferred to London by a writ of habeas corpus, and having been sentenced to death by to death for highway robbery, was committed to Newgate to await his execution. Although initially shocked by his sentence, he regained his composure and continued life as best as he could with the confines of the prison. He wrote a 30-page autobiography entitled The Life of Henry Sims from his birth to his exit and had many women visitors. He and fellow prisoner Mary Allen became attached to one another and even though Sims would occasionally beat her in an attempt to win his freedom, he began to write to the king and various secretaries of state claiming that there was a plot to assassinate the king and that he could reveal the details in return for a pardon. Little came of the ruse. Some people were arrested, but, an ex but on examination it became clear that Sims had concocted the story. Reeling he was, realizing he was not going to be freed, he made a statement claiming that he had been responsible for yet another crime, absolving the man suspected of committing it, Black Sam, even though the stolen goods had been found at Black Sam's house the night before his execution. He obtained a knife and hid it in his clothing, but it was found and taken from him. On the day of his execution, June the 17th, 1747, he dressed smartly in clean clothes, and as he mounted the cart which took the prisoners to the gallows at Tyburn, he tossed his shoes into the crowd. Going up to the gallows, he saw a man who had been arrested as a result of Sim's fictionous assassination plot, and asked his forgiveness. As they were about to be hanged, he joined hands with Mary Allen one last time before he was executed, like all other highwaymen. Nothing is really known about the book. I highly doubt you can get a copy of it for yourself, but who knows? These highwaymen usually never last long either way. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you love today's video, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a comment in the dis in the comment section down below. And as one fellow YouTuber said, we shall do this very soon again, my friends. As video number two, like every Monday, will be coming out soon after this video.
Bye, everyone.